Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you once again, not quite live, One Take Studios, where today I've combined kind of two topics for us. The idea that how do we find the areas that are under any normal curve, and then how do we find inverse normal? How might that work? All right, so first things first, uh, keyword here, any normal curve, not just a standard normal. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was no technology. And in order to find anything regarding areas or probabilities with normal curves, you had to be able to look things up on a table. And the table only did standard normal. All right, everything had been standardized. So how does that work today? Well, we can still go that route, and let me explain it to you, but let me show you what is more likely to happen today. With an example that I have actually tried to make somewhat realistic here, I, I did some Googling of information, and so while I did make these up, they actually are within the limits of, of cell phone batteries at the moment. So our example that we're going to use to demonstrate this idea here is that we've got a cell phone battery lasts a mean of 27 months with a standard deviation of 3.6 months. And the question becomes, what is the probability of my phone's battery, ooh, apostrophe, of my phone's battery lasting at least three years? Well, if you look at this, this is not standardized. All right, I don't have any z-scores. I have a mean that is 27, not zero. I have a standard deviation of 3.6, not one. And so, again, once upon a time, what I would need to do is take my three years, and I would need to convert that to a z-score, and then it would be standardized, and then I could look everything up on a table. Uh, specifically, the table, I'm looking at the name of the table here, is called Areas of a Standard Normal Distribution. You would still do that. If that makes you happy, convert that to a z-score, go find your table, and look stuff up. But maybe, maybe we have a different approach with today's technology. All right, I do want to put together a sketch of this so we can kind of see, and then I will pull up my calculator screen as well. So again, this is just a sketch, something like that. There's our asymptote, and we are saying right now that we have a mean value of 27. So I do not have it standardized at the moment, and I'm also not going to freak out. I do know that this is going to be 3.6, so if I'm counting by standard deviations, 27 plus 3.6 would be 30.6 for the next marking up, and I could keep going. I'm not going to right now. Um, although, actually, you know what? Maybe I should. Uh, let's go one more. Can I do that? 33, 34.2. Please tell me that's right. <laughs> I hope that's right. 34.2, maybe, possibly, because that's 7.2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. All right, and then you can go down from there as well. So 27 minus 3 is 24, minus 0.6 is 23.4. Uh, Lord willing, I didn't mess that up. So here's our mean at 27, right smack dab in the middle. And I put this here at least because this helps me to see a little bit closer to where my three year mark is. Something that you should pay attention to, that was in months, that was in months, that is in years. These really need to be the same units. So three years, same thing as, you got it, 36 months. Well, where is 36 months going to show up in this mess? If that's 34.2, 36, we're talking really, really, really tiny up here. Okay? So I would expect the probability to be kind of small because the area is kind of small. Again, at least three means three years or longer, so 36 months or more. And so I'm talking this little spot right here. All right, so now that I have the idea of what this should look like and what I might be looking for, I'm going to switch my screen over to this guy. Yep, there we go. And everything fun and exciting is always in the menu. Uh, bonus, you could actually go to probability or statistics today and end up in the right spot. I'm going to go statistics because why not? Ooh, not there though. There we go. This is a probability distribution. All right, so standard normal curves, normal curves are probability distributions, so we'll go there. And, ooh, look what we have. This is a normal distribution. And since we said at least, that means 36 or more, we're going to go normal CDF. We're going to get a cumulative measurement of multiple probabilities. All right, so now really strange stuff pops up here. Uh, lower bound, they're like, ooh, let me be helpful. Let's put in a really insanely small number. The E, by the way, is scientific notation. This is negative 9 times 10 to the 999th. I don't need to value that small. In fact, I don't want to value that small. Because if I think about it, my lower bound is actually what? My lower bound is 36 months. Because I'm talking about 36 or more. So I want it to be at least 36. My lower bound is 36. I don't want to go low, lower than that. What should I use for an upper bound? 
Well, you've got some flexibility here. The recommendation is this. The recommendation is that you take your mean and that you would add to that at least four, where's my multiplication sign? There it is. At least four standard deviations. So we're talking, what is that? Four times 3.6. So recommendation is that you go at least four standard deviations above the mean for this value. Um, I don't know that I would like to do this much math at the moment, and I don't need to. If I pick anything larger than that, I will get the same value, simply because the changes in the, in the amount of probability slash area here will be so insanely small, so many decimal places down the line, I won't be able to see the difference. So maybe, for the fun of it, I just type in 500. Because what's the likelihood of my phone lasting 500 months? Ooh, yeah. So I'm pretty sure I'm safely way, way above where I need to be. Now, this is not standardized at the moment, so I don't want to say that I have a mean of zero unless I have already changed this stuff over to a z-score. Since I have not, I want to say, hey, my mean was 27 months and my standard deviation was 3.6 months. So I will actually type those in because it's not standardized, and that way it's not set to look standardized. Okie dokie. Hmm. What did I type in wrong? That's what it is. Did you guys catch that? All right, I, I hit an extra key in there someplace. I need to take out this one. That was 3.6, not 13.6. Oh, so much better. So, so, so much better. All right, because we said we would expect an insanely small value, and in fact, we have an insanely small value. We are saying that the area under the curve at that really tiny tail end is only 0.006. So approximately a sixth of a percent. So if I go back to my take a peek at my paper for a second here, we're saying, okay, that area right there, which is also my probability, is insanely small. It's possible. It could happen that my phone's battery would last 36 months or more, but it is not super likely. And that's how I would figure that out. Okay. What does this look like from an inverse standpoint then? Notice the typical order of, or, order of operations, I guess you could call it that. The idea being that I start with a raw data value of some kind, and I convert that to an area or probability. Well, so what does inverse do? Inverse should undo that process, correct? So what we are saying here is that for inverse normal, we have the area or the probability, so we are not looking for the area or the probability, we already have this, and that we are trying to find, we want the corresponding z-score or raw data value. That makes sense. All inverse operations that we've ever talked about in life, they undo things. So this is undoing this process. Instead of starting here and finding this, we're starting here and finding this. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this is may or may not be making sense to you, but for a lot of people, they're looking at this going, yeah, nodding my head, okay, all right, I got this. If I ask somebody, when do you use inverse normal, they usually cannot answer me. So I would say, please make sure that you have this someplace where you've got it decorated, where you say, hey, I, I use the inverse normal if I already have the area, and I'm looking for the value to go with that. Please make sure that you know that. Like, and that, that falls out of people's brains so fast. Okay, so here's the other thing that you should know. All of the ancient tables that you used to look things up, not only were they standard normal, but they were all left-tailed. And while technology has made a ton of progress, in case you didn't notice, this was not on the left, this was on the right, and we had no problems whatsoever running this in the calculator screen, inverse norm in the calculator is a thing, but it's left-tailed. So second note to self, if I'm setting this up and I go to use inverse norm, automatically it's going to assume the left end of the graph and not the right end of the graph. So I may need to do a little bit extra thinking to set that up. Hey, calculator people, can you fix that? That'd be cool. Thanks. All right. So here's what I'm going to say. Same information, right? So borrowing the same stuff here. The phone company doesn't want to replace more than 5% of their customers' batteries. So they want to be able to offer a warranty, but they don't want to go broke doing it. So how long should the warranty be if they don't want to replace more than 5%? Okay, let's again, let's put an image with this and see if we can make it make sense, shall we? So here's my sketch. Something like that. Again, this is just a sketch. It is not perfect. I am still working off of this data, so I know that 27 is my mean. I know that my standard deviation is still 3.6. 
But, okay, so let's think. Are you thinking? Because a lot of people can't decide which end to put this 5% at. Make it make sense in context. It should actually make sense in context. If phones typically last 27 months, do you as the phone company say, hey, you know what? These batteries usually die right around 27 months. I know. I'm going to make a warranty that'll make it last 30 months. No, you're not willing to do that because if they typically die here, you're saying, hey, I'm willing to, to roll the dice and see if it lasts longer than the typical death date of the battery. That means I definitely want something that is this direction. I'm only willing to put together a warranty that is less than the mean battery life because otherwise I will go broke. So I am saying, this is not drawn to scale because I want to be able to write, that I'm looking for the bottom 5%. So this piece right here, all right, the bottom 5%, I would like to know what Z-score or raw score right here which is going to be something less than 27, will make this happen and give me this 5% value. Again, I have the area slash probability, and I'm looking for this value. Now, quite frankly, I'm not actually looking for a z-score because I'm still working within my raw data values, and I can do that. You could go either way, but I can do that. So here's what I want to do next. By the way, please note, this is on the left side. This is left-tailed, so we are not going to need to do anything super crazy when we put this in the calculator. So jumping screens, again, jumping screens right here. There we go. And we go back to our menu and decide what looks good on the menu. Again, we can go probability or statistics. Either way, maybe I'll go probability this time. This is still a distribution, but oh, look what we have here. Inverse normal, inverse norm for the calculator. All right, so our area, our area is 5%. We're gonna say 0 0.05 because we're doing calculations. Therefore, we definitely wanna write that as a decimal. Again, we're not looking for a z-score at the moment. You could, but because I have specific information, like I know that 27 is my mean, and I know that my standard deviation was 3.6, not 13. What the heck is happening with the extra one there? Seriously, that was not my fault. Okay, <laughs> 3.6, and I tell it, okay. So here's my inverse norm. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 21.0785. What does that indicate? All right, so I'm going to make a comment here so that I don't lose my spot. There we go. So, all right, so jot that down, 21.0785. You can round there. I called it 27, I called it 21.08. And again, I'm going to jump back to my other screen. And there we go. That means that right here, this is the raw data value that corresponds with the 5%. This is 21.08. This is saying, if I run a warranty right around 21 months, any phones that whose batteries die before 21 months, that's going to be roughly 5% that I end up replacing. And if it's more than that, well, I don't want to pay for it. So that's going to be where I want to set my warranty. Which again, that's kind of a weird warranty. Usually they go with something that's a little bit more even, like 24 months or something like that. But based on this, if I truly didn't want to pay more than 5%, I would probably set it at a 21 month mark and saying, I'm willing to guarantee my phone's battery that I'm selling you until 21 months. And after that, you're on your own. Okay, I'm hoping that makes some sense. I do want to do a real quick thought. What would happen if I wanted the right tail instead? Would I still put 5% in? No. If I want the value at this end, I would want to put in 95% in order to find this, the marking on my x-axis that'll give me the top 5%. So you're either putting in the area as it exists, or you are putting in the complement of the area if you'd like the right tail instead of the left tail. Things to think about. All right, so yeah, don't get turned around here. Otherwise, just have some fun with it. Make sure that you keep thinking. Always think, okay? All right, thank you.